देवी प्रसन्न मदने कुरुनावतारे दिव्य जलोद्युतिमयी त्रिजगज्जनित्री कल्याणकारिणी बरा भयदानशीले मातर्विराज सतत मम हृत्सरोजी चैतन्यदायिनी भवं बुधिपात नेत्री शांति प्रदेश विमले सकलार्तिनाशे मातर्विराज सतत मम हृत्सरोजी ओम शांति 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 ओ गॉडेस विथ ग्रेसियस स्माइल ओ मादर सारदा ओ अवतार ऑफ कंपैशन यू शाइन विथ डिवाइन ग्लो ओ मदर ऑफ द थ्री वर्ल्ड्स यू टेक केयर ऑफ आवर वेलफेयर रिमूव आवर फियर ओ मदर डोएल फॉर एवर इन द लोटस ऑफ माय हार्ट ओ एम्बॉडीमेंट ऑफ ब्रह्मन मोस्ट ब्यूटीफुल एंड ऑस्पिशस वन आवर रेफ्यूज You grant spiritual awakening and take us across the ocean of this world and worldliness. You are purity itself, the grantor of peace and the destroyer of misery. O oh Mother, dwell forever in the lotus of my heart. O oh, peace, peace, peace be unto us all. Today our topic is. Holy Mother, in the eyes of Sami Sharada Ananda and Turi Ananda. This we know of Sami Vivek Ananda, talking about Holy Mother in his highest esteem. Whereas there are other disciples also, particularly Sami Sharada Ananda who served Holy Mother for a long time. and turiyananda was not that closely serving but in this month of january we have all the three birthdays mother holy holy mother's birthday sarada devi's birthday and then is sami sarada ananda's birthday and sami turiyananda so we thought that if we look at holy mother through the lens of sarada ananda and turiyananda that will be a good meditation sarodananda is the first general secretary of the whole ramakrishna movement ramakrishna one day sat on him and saying that i am testing how much load you can carry it is ramakrishna the person this ramakrishna center load ramakrishna sangh the organization its entire responsibility is testing and actually he did that after his passing away ramakrishna's passing away sami vivekananda when founded the organization he made him the first general secretary of the whole order and he continued till his death when after the passing away of sami brahmananda and also sami shivananda sami they at least he was offered to be the president but he said no sami vivekananda has given me the responsibility whatever i will carry on and this is a big job to big big uh, yes to run the whole organization administration to look after the needs of the so many swamis who are joining young men and women uh, not women but young men but he used to take care of the women also very closely he used to serve the needs of the widow women who have nobody to look after he was very careful saradananda used to take care of them keep their accounts with them send give their money to when they were needed like their bank of no uh, widows ladies and where they have not no place to go and stay and she used to serving the bhaktas the devotees as also the monastics and also they run the administration of the whole organization in very beginning stage there was not it is so much organization has not come in the format what we are now but it was very difficult for and single handedly he had to take care of so many things 
but his pride was that he is the gatekeeper of holy mother and he has a, he is to look at holy mother totally different it is not mother it is not the mother of the universe it is the mother of the whole universe not that only but she can transform anyone in any moment by her touch and she used to he used to view swami sharadanand used to view holy mother as a dynamic power the tremendous energy the cosmic energy which is running the whole show bibi this swami sharadanand to know about little bit of him he is a great scholar erudite scholar and he wrote the life of swami sri ramakrishna and he supplied the materials of all the text of written by roman roland all the points of swami sri ramakrishna's life incidents and stories he supplied them to roman roland so and he came in this country priest vedanto with a with a uh, in, in, inspiration of swami vivekananda and was called back again to go to take up the responsibility of the sangha the whole order so we find that swami sharadananda is a great spiritual personality and he has come and sirin in his practice he has done practice in such a way that he can withstand all types of obstacles smilingly and with great peace and uh, calmness in his serenity in his own mind he there is diffi- it is difficult <coughs> for such a person who is writing the life swami vivekananda was requested to write the life of sa sri ramakrishna and swami vivekananda said i am incapable of doing so he is so big so big he is so vast if i try to depict him i will make a monkey out of a what is called shiva huh? lord shiva someone gave me to build a uh, image of lord shiva and i will make it like that of a monkey that means it is i will make a mess of it so i am not fit for writing anything about sri ramakrishna but that adverse task has been taken by sami sharadananda and it was also consequential that this book was written one inspiration is ramakrishna's life and it is to be written in such a language the local scholars of the time can understand that otherwise they will not accept sri ramakrishna as avatar that's why his tremendous spiritual insight is necessary to write this book it is that's why the book which we get now called lila prasanga now recently it is called the great master was the old translation and new translation is the ramakrishna is and his divine play by sami chetananda this book is not a biography it is a philosophical book bringing the incident of sri ramakrishna's life and making him manage to understand ramakrishna was a manifestation of the ancient wisdom of india so it was a very serious task for anyone to depict such right such art book and he was doing that but inspiration is another thing he wanted to find a place for holy mother and for that purpose he need some money and he loan to loan for construction of the mayar bari what is called bag bazar where holy mother used to live last last, last days and he has to loan and to pay me pay the room um, rent i uh, the loan so he started writing this book and selling this book some income will come that will gradually repay the loan so inspiration is unique inspiration to write the life of sri ramakrishna to pay the loan of the house constructed by him with the inspiration to keep the holy mother in a place because sami vivekananda said that i want mother a place for mother first first mother and her 
daughters and then father and his children. That means mother was a top priority in the mind of Swami Vivekananda, Brahmananda, Shivananda and all, even Sarodananda of course. So that we find that they have got tremendous devotion to Holy Mother and mother's word is the last word. Swami Vivekananda used to say, hey, Swami Sri Ramakrishna is a person, you can go and argue. We fought and argued. We said, this is your hallucination, your vision is your, you are all creating in your... Very difficult for anyone to understand that there is a, the glory of Divine Mother. That's why we try to see what Swami Sharadananda, Swami Brahmananda and others have looked upon, particularly this month we'll think about Sarodananda and Turiyananda. Ramakrishna, Sri Ramakrishna passed away and Holy Mother was back to Jayanambati and Kamarpukuri's native place and then, then she was in utter difficult situation. Then she was brought to Calcutta in different places, Mother stayed. And, but we, there are no permanent place for mother. So that was the need of co constructing a, a temple in a, a house in Calcutta in Bagbazar. And that is the way my mother's house, Udvodhan, is now, is now uh, mother is worshipped there and thousands of people flock there. This holy mother is to say that who can take my my responsibilities. Is it easy to take care of my, my, me and my children? There is nobody I find that except Sarat, means Sarodananda, there is anybody who can take responsibility in that way. And she used to talk about, uh, about Sarat, that Sarat is the jewel of my, crown of my head, no? So much, so much Holy Mother is to depend on uh, him and is to say, this is a great statement, that Swarat is my jewel in my crown of my head. That means, is a be, maybe Mother is giving extraordinary res, many res, respect for Swarat Maharaj, for his crown. On the other hand, we find Swarat says that this mother is such a power, she can do whatever she wants to do. She can make you a sage and saint by will, by, by glance, by look. So one devotee went and he made, made a big prostration before Sarat Maharaj, Sarodananda, and said, what, Sarodananda said, what's the matter? No, Maharaj, please bless me. Hmm? and so that I make some spiritual progress. Then Sarodhananda Swami said, You fool, do you know the grace? You got the grace of Holy Mother and you are asking me to put any blessings on you? She can, she is such a spiritual power, she can just make me you in position I am here now. That means, who is Swami Sarodhananda? As I said, a par excellent Brahma Gyani, the greatest scholar, erudite scholar, writer, and auditor, having such quality and renowned person in the society. And he is saying that, you fool, you are asking my grace, my blessings. Don't you know who has blessed you? By hard grace, you can be illumined and you can be saint just now. So, we are all looking at her, I are all looking at her face to see, to get a glance of her, her kindness and compassion. And he, she, in Swami Sharadananda, as, uh, as a general secretary, writer of the book of Lila Prashanga, as I mentioned, and Brahma Gyani Par Excellent, so, but he is humbly thinking that I have no credit, but my glory is only I am a gatekeeper of Holy Mother. Gatekeeper means Holy Mother used to live in the second floor of the building, 
in Bag Bazar, which has been uh, built that time. And the ground floor, Swami Sharodananda used to live in a very small room. This room is still there. And that is his office, general secretary's office. Maybe a room, maybe six feet by uh, six feet by six feet small room. And he used to live in the floor and with a small desk. Uh, so that is the writing table. And this is minor thing. Major thing that who comes to Holy Mother to see and not to disturb Holy Mother. So she used to be always standing there and guiding them what time to come, what not to come. So one day, one uh, one young man has come and he wanted to see mother. He said, I want to go to mother. The Saradhan and said, no, no, mother is not keeping well, you cannot go now, you come some other time. And then he was so arrogant, he said, yeah, mother is only your mother, mother is also our mother. Who are you? And then he elbowed Swami Sarodananda and make his way up and went up to the stairs and then saluted Holy Mother. And after saluting, he felt bad. Then he openly said, Mother, I have done a very bad job <laughs> while coming to you. I have pushed Swami Sarodananda away on my way and he humbly, of course, let me come. Uh, so what shall I do now? And then Holy Mother said, my, my boy, what did you do? You go and beg apology. Beg apology to him. He is a Brahmagani and, and you have insulted like that. And then he came back and he went to Sarutan on the Sami and bowed down to him. Then he said, mm, please forgive me what I have done. I should not have done that. But look at the greatness of Sarudananda. Sarudananda said, nothing to worry about that. You, without such intense desire to see the Divine Mother, can one go to see? That means it is a glory to you. you. You have insulted me is not the point. My insult is not point. He is looking at the angle, from the angle of the develop the devotion of the individual boy who is so when I, intense to go to see mother in any way. So that intense uh, restlessness for mother is necessary for having the vision of mother. So see that what a beautiful attitude of and uh, Sarodhananda is looking at mother in what esteem that it is to, you are going to the Divine Mother, she is not ordinary mother, she is the Divine Mother and you are going to her if you have not that sincerity, that earnestness, that intense urge to see Mother, any obstacle matters little. So that is appreciated and that means the respect for Mother is so high. In, and Swami Sharadananda wrote a book in Bengali that was called Bharatir Shakti Puja, English is Mother Worship in India. And there in the introduction, he dedicated, and this book was dedicated to Holy Mother. And in the, in the dedication, she has expressed these few words, which is very powerful. He said that he used these significant words, by whose gracious look the author has been able, author is the Saradhananda, by whose gracious look, Miss Holy Mother, the author has been able to realize, what to realize? The revelation of divine motherhood in every female form to the lotus feet of her, this work is dedicated with all humility and devotion. It's a very small statement, but it gives a beautiful image what Sarodhananda thinks about Holy Mother. Only he, what he says, by whose gracious look, Mother is so powerful, casting a glance on me only. He has given me that wisdom. And that wisdom is what? What is the end of all tantric worship, no? Tantra. Tantra is what? Tantra is seeing Mother everywhere. And he says that the author, means Sami Sarodhananda, has been able to realize, what realization? The revelation of the Divine Mother in every woman of the world. My God! See who by a little glance 
a person like Sarodananda can give, open the eyes to see nothing but Divine Mother in everywhere, no? So that is the power who is what is in the eyes of Swami Sarodananda thinking about Holy Mother. You know, we all know to keep the mind little control, to come down and get a little peace, how much we struggle for our meditation and prayer and going to holy places and doing all these things. But here, he is talking about Holy Mother is such a power, just casting a glance on me, he has given me this wisdom. We find that Swami Bigyanananda statement, no? Bigyanananda Swami is to not go to Holy Mother. Now and then you will be just going there, they may be sitting in the ground floor and talking to Saradananda Swami and this, don't go to Mother and pronoun from there and go back. But why? His mother is such a power. He said that when I entered into the, in the ground floor and mother is in the upper, up, upper second floor, my lotus of my heart understood. Because Ramakrishna going to some place and just this moment he is talking, next moment his mind is shooted into the realm of divine and then he goes to Samadhi and this whole atmosphere is transformed and changed. Everyone can feel that spiritual upsurge. That is possible. But where is Holy Mother? That's why Sri Ramakrishna said that at the when he was leaving his body, he called Holy Mother one day and said with, with very earnest, sincere appeal, won't you do anything? And he said, the, Cal- the people of Calcutta are like crawling worms then world and worldliness, no? So he said, what shall I do? No, you, you will have to do much more, what I have done. Well, he said, I, I am a village woman. I don't go to face the people. I, even I don't look at the face directly. There is an old habit of keeping a veil of cloth in the face. Of the, even if you go to the village now in India, in certain areas you will find that women are putting a veil. Uh, to, that is the custom, that time, away from the vision of others. So, how, what can I do? Then he said, what I have done, you will have to do much more than I have done. Now we can see, actually, today, uh, after uh, this time, so many uh, years passed, we can see that how Holy Mother is spreading the spiritual message and how she is taking the dominant role in the Vedanta movement, Ramakrishna Vedanta movement. A friend of Sarudananda Swami, he said he was very close to Sarudananda Swami and he said one day to Swami Sarudananda that I have lived so long in the company of the Holy Mother and I have seen all of you, the monks. But how is it that I cannot understand the mother in the least? That was the question put before Swami Sarodananda. And Sarodananda said, Swami said, what can we understand of the mother? This, however, I can say that I have never seen such a great mind and I do not hope to see. Very big statement. Holy Mother is he have said, I am, Sarodananda Swami said, I have not seen, never seen such a great mind, that big, huge, where everyone has a place in it. In those days of Indian context and the Brahmin, Orthodox Brahmin idea, so there is so much dis- class distinction and all these things. But you see, Nivedita is going with Samiji, you know, and Nivedita was apprehensive, what will happen, whether Holy Mother will accept her or not. And he was thinking, if Holy Mother accepts her, then India will accept her. So that was the Swami Vivekananda's fear, whether Holy Mother will accept, because she's orthodox uh, Brahmin women, and he's coming from the West, eh? and then it's called the class distinction and the ideas in the Brahminic um, people as so much that they are called mlechas. Mlechas means outcast. So, 
but see a holy mother. As soon as Nivedita went and the mother immediately accepted her with such respect and love and says, Oh, my cookie. And he said, What is your name? Then Nivedita said, My name is Margaret E. Noble. And then Holy Mother said, Baba, my child, I cannot say so many words. I will call you cookie. <laughs> cookie means darling daughter. Uh, very small young kids are called cookie. So I, can, I cannot say big name like that. I will call you my cookie. And she sat together, eat together, feed the sweets in her, in her own hand as she did it with other uh, normal uh, children of this country. So such a broad mind to accept MacLeod, to accept Sarah Bull and all these things is a today's context we think it, what is that speciality. But in those contexts it is to be understood and her acceptance actually Swami Vivekananda believed that the India accepted these ideas of the South because Swamiji was always trying to bridge the two, the best of East and the best of the West. So his mission, he got fully satisfied that a mother has accepted that way, India will accept this bridging together. And then Swami Sharadananda said that I have not seen such, never seen such a great mind and I do not hope to see. Man, is not Swami Vivekananda is broad-minded, Ramakrishna is broad-minded, but he, he is saying Holy Mother's broadness goes far beyond. Because Swami Sri Ramakrishna also, no? you see he is so broad-minded, but he cannot take the touch of others. Eh? Even, even very open, nothing inside, but he could not take the touch of all. But he had Holy Mother, not the touch of all, taking all the responsibility for everyone and swallowing that in her own life and giving them the peace and solace. So this is the great mind of acceptance of all. There is no distinction. Sami, what Holy Mother said that this, there is no one stranger, my child, make the whole world your own. Example is Holy Mother. There is no rejection. In, 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 in certain places, Sri Ramakrishna rejected. Rejected means his body is so super sattik, he cannot withstand. But mother's power is such that she can keep her spirituality under control and behave like an ordinary person. That's the simplicity of Holy Mother, which is unique in to observe and to meditate upon. Then Sarudana Swami continued, it is also another characteristic. It is, I have never seen in anyone such attachment, nor have I seen such detachment. She was so deeply attached to Radhu, mother's niece. But when her last day came, she said, please send her away. Then question was made, what will happen when you will like to see her again? Holy Mother said, no, I have not the slightest attraction for anyone anymore. So this appears when Holy Mother used to talk about uh, Keep the mind of Holy Mother, which is shooting, shooting up all the time. The mother is to bring the mind down by keeping her mind in the niece and other family members. To keep the mind down is to love Radhi and others, his niece, her niece and others. And on one place, Sarudananda Swami said probably that see the condition of, of her that mother used to bring her mind from the absolute down to the heart chakra, the, the throat chakra by keeping these attachments together. Keeping these attachments so that the mind thinks about the lower thing. And what we are struggling hard to raise our mind to the higher chakra. We are all struggling day and night how our mind can be lifted to a higher chakra. And Holy Mother is such power that she's mind is flying into the absolute. To bring the mind down forcefully, she is making this attachment, loving aspect of her attachment, which looks like very deeply attached because Radhi and Nolini and all the nieces around, some crazy guy and Radhi's mom 
and other like a family in the family f- situation as if he is like an ordinary family lady no attached to their niece attached to the um, settlement of their brothers for property and it looks very ordinary but sarodananda swami said that this attachment is so intense we get perplexed and detachment also so unique that he can just you can attach and you can detach whole spiritual life of our teachers how to attach and how to detach we know attaching but we have no knowledge of detaching if detachment is done then you are a spiritual person no attachment is we all know i love someone means our love means we attach we get attached but attaching to the inner reality the divinity and detaching to which is mundane and changeful this is the art of loving holy mother's life depicts that and sami sharadananda said that 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 is the attachment and detachment while talking about the holy mother in such a strain then sami sharadananda became absorbed in her thought and began to hum a song the purport of which is as follows then talking about the glory of mother and sami sharadananda went into little internal mood and his, after some time he started singing a song that amazed to witness your antics o mother i am musing as to whether i should laugh or i should weep in the strange fear of the world you make and unmake things all day long even the children do i have lived long by your side and followed you let me now acknowledge my defeat i could not understand you so this is a beautiful emotional uh, expression of the feeling about holy mother what sami Sar- saradananda had that he got absorbed into in his own mood and then he sang that this song that i you are playing like a child plays no child plays in the in the beach we find that children are making castles made up sand no and when they are doing how much attached you see with all that attachment bringing water bringing sand and making a design and then design and building a building if you talk to the boy or the, the girl have no time it's very serious in that and when the play goes on and then mom says let us go home then what happens throw the away and not come away no attachment attachment and detachment child like attachment child like detachment and holy mother is an example our life should be really a blessed example so what sarodananda swami's outlook is check and looking at mother is an example that you live in the world like that feel attached as long as duty demands and feel detached how will you detach that means you have to go to the inner core of the personality not the human personality as we see with the body and mind and emotion and ego beyond that that is the reality and holy mother stands in that reality all the time keeping that attachment is there therefore detachment can be any time practiced because these are all mortal thing changing so this is the beautiful song and i can sing that song but no not necessary <laughs> it's a beautiful song rang dekhe rang moir ami obak hoyechi i been astounded to see the divine play of the mother hasibo ki kadibo tai boshe bhabte chi obak hoyechi i am really astounded i do not know i shall smile or i shall cry and weep the beautiful lila of the divine mother i am really lost into it uh, and i am staying with you chirokal roilam kache i am living with you day and night phirilam pache pache i followed you everywhere kichu na bujhte pere i without understanding your glory or your magnificence 
আমি অবাক হয়েছি আই হ্যাভ বিকাম রিয়েলি লস্ট অ্যান্ড আই ডোন্ট নো ইউর আই ক্যান নট এক্সপ্রেস দ্য গ্লোরি অফ ইউরস সো আই হ্যাভ লিভ লং বাই ইউর সাইড অ্যান্ড ফলোড ইউ লেট মি নাও অ্যাকনলেজ মাই ডিফেক্ট আই কুড নট আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড ইউ এট অল সি Swami Vivek Swami Sarodananda speaks of another greatness of holy mother <coughs> he is talking about his brothers were very worldly minded uh, only mani my sister mani mother saroda loves my younger brother more not me that much he gives more money to the <laughs> this as we as you always deal in our home home front always if you have a the few children and mom and dad has the property and division that time this thing of course rule is that you have to divide equal now <laughs> but even if you do that sarodananda swami was asked the holy mother called sarodananda swami to distribute the property among the brothers so that, that they don't fight with each other anymore and sarodananda swami came and did all those division and uh, property was divided equally and given to all the brothers equally but still cunningly someone comes to get little more and it's a struggle and ma keeping the this peace in the mind untouched by her. so when the division of the landed property and money uh, was being given the authority to sarot maharaj to handle holy mother was sitting there mm. and they are always making uh, a trouble between themselves that whether the other brother is getting little more or i am getting little less and when this type of botheration is too much for a spiritual person no but holy mother is keeping her peace and, and that mind is peace and face is serene then sarodananda sami said look at us if something happens little bit uh, not according to our wish we get fire we get angry and we get outburst into anger but look at mother what he, her brothers are doing all the time but see mother remains as calm and serene she was as if in her samadhi in her mood of perfect peace so this is the under difficult condition how mother lived in perfect internal peace and tranquility so that is the spiritual power which mother had one time sami sarodananda was sitting on the belur mat and mother durga's worship was done durga puja is a big festival so when it was done uh, then the worshipper brahmachari then came to holy mother to sarodananda sami and brahmananda they are sitting in one place they came to salute the maharaj and sarod sarodananda sami and others then sarodananda sami gave a coin and to the brahmachari and told that go and tell mother whether she is pleased with the puja worship the brahmachari get little confused the two mother one mother is the mother in the image which has been she worshiped he worshiped for three days and there is another mother who is mother saroda in the guest of the belur mot then staying there so he was puzzled to go to this mother or that mother that time the sami sarodanand said are you fool you do not know we are worshiping mother durga she is the real durga and this we are worshiping her in the form of mother durga with ten arms but she is the real mother so in their view it was holy mother is the maha shakti the great power the great power sami vivekananda said that there is some where in the cosmos a grand great spiritual energy which is the cause of all this manifestation in this universe and that has taken a form and that is sami Bi- holy mother holy mother is the maha shakti osheshananda sami wants uh, you know osheshananda sami was the head of our uh, portland center and holy mother's disciple but he was also 
the private secretary of Swami Sharadananda. I am talking about Sharadananda. And that Swami one day uh, make a big pranam salutation to Swami Sharadananda. And he is asking, Swami, uh, you should bless me with certain special instruction. Uh, instruction about what? Instruction about my meditation and prayer. Then Swami, oh, Sarodananda Swami said, You fool, eh? mother has given you whatever you have given, you know that is the last word in spiritual life. There is nothing more to be given. Just follow that and that's the and you will get everything. So you see, Sarodananda Swami is a Brahmagyari, so he can say, yes, Ma has given this mantra, okay, that will make the mantra a little stronger, so that I can have spiritual experience. But what Sarodananda Swami said, you are a fool. Huh? Holy Mother, you think is ordinary? What has come out of our mouth? That is enough for giving you liberation. And you come to me, and I am looking at her grace, and you are look, looking at me. That is their great adoration. It is not superficial, uh, just feeling or emotions, but it is because of their day-to-day -day experience they see with Holy Mother. And Sarodhananda Swami said, our mother is the Jagan Mahatma, the mother of the universe herself. Believe that and hold on to him in this way. One time it happened, <coughs> Sarodhananda Swami used to depend on the management of the Ramakrishna order also on Holy Mother. So what time, what happened that uh, during that time of India, the freedom fighting movement was going on and the young boys were all in, interested in removing the Britishers from the country and they were going in with gun and this and that. But some of them understood that is not the path to, to remove the Britishers. Rather, to build up our life, so they turned towards the Ramakrishna movement and they joined in our Ramakrishna order. And because anyone, any boy who is in, caught into the freedom fighting movement, the Britishers are watching that there is a Vivekananda's book. And Vivekananda talks about freedom, freedom, freedom. So they thought that this, this guy is creating trouble. So, and Ramakrishna mission is a pseudo spiritual organization and it is taking that wearing the garb of Gerua, they are actually supporting this freedom fighting movement. So, Lord Carmichael, the governor general, in 1916, he went to Dhaka, which is the present now Bangladesh, but it was one India that time, and he declared there in a, a courthouse that this, this Ramakrishna mission monks are in the garb of Gerua, wearing the, this cloth, and they are actually taking away the young boy's mind and they are actually instigating this movement. And when that was said, then try to be careful about that and that later, that utterance from the Governor General created a big turmoil in our order and really it was very uh, difficult for General Secretary to maintain because every boy, police is after them, checking morning, checking evening, what. And then it, it was reported to Holy Mother. Ma, what shall we do? This is the condition and what steps should we take? But then Holy Mother said, those boys who have taken refuge in Sri Ramakrishna and taking the spirit of renunciation have given up everything for their heart and home and for the good of the one's own self-realization and to serve the people in the universe, they have, they have absorbed themselves and given up all their personal pleasure and happiness. So, they are genuine. Why they will be making a vain, false vein to be a pseudo uh, fight, freedom fighter? So, you should do one thing. You should go and make a meeting with the governor general and place your points very clearly, probably he will understand and he will change his opinion. 
And if this idea never came to Saradananda Swami even, but Holy Mother directed them calmly, serenely, and actually then Saradananda Swami went with with some uh, make an appointment with the Governor General and then presented the activities of the Ramakrishna movement, what is going on, how they are treating the orphans, orphanage uh, children to take their protection, give them food, nurturing this and that and educational development and also the all other social and, and activities of the uh, for the good of the country what is done. So that was presented before them and to the surprise of Swami Sharadananda they found that the that Lord Carmichael then understood that it was sorry, wrong assessment on his part and then he openly wrote a letter apologizing his statement in Dhaka that I have done a wrong statement there, I withdraw my old, I am very sorry for that and that changed the whole scenario again back to normal for the Ramakrishna movement. So this is the Holy Mother, apparently she says she does not know anything but far deep insight and inspiring everyone to go back to the truth, go to the truth back and whatever happens then take the challenge. So this is Holy Mother. Swami Turiyananda. Swami Turiyananda, I have not mentioned about him, just few words. We don't get much about the reactions of Holy Mother, about Holy Mother, excepting few references in the letters of Swami Turiyananda. Turiyananda was one of the Ramakrishna's disciples. He was a Brahma Gani Par excellent. He was from the childhood he said, I am Atman, I am Brahman. Eh? And he is not to even, he visited Ramakrishna and he, he stopped coming to Ramakrishna for a long time. Then he inquired, Ramakrishna inquired about Hori. His name was Turiyananda, was young Hori. Uh, where is Hori? I didn't see him. And then he came one day and said, Hey, why don't you see you anymore? Well, uh, because he is not coming, because he is think in a deep study of the Vedanta. He is day and night thinking, I am Brahman, I am Atman, I am not the body, not the mind. Not. Okay? So one day he came to Ramakrishna and said, you, you, why didn't you come? No, I was practicing Vedanta. What is in your Vedanta? Is not it that God is the real and everything is unreal? Is there anything more than that? So if that is so, love God. Think of God. But he was, whatever he took, he understood the core meaning of Vedanta and then lived that life and he became a par excellent Brahma and he came in this country, he preached uh, according to Swami Vivekananda's instruction, he came here and stayed here. He was in, there are many photos you can find in the Risley Manor. Uh, he is in the Swami Vivekananda, group photos are there. So he came and also he came in Pasadena, South Pasadena also here and talked. So she and he, he didn't say much about Holy Mother, but his only few letters we find where instruction is given. The Ma try to be a child of Holy Mother and Mother is always ready to help you. Pray to her, everything, every obstacle will be removed. Whether you understand or not, know that Holy Mother is only our refuge. In another place she said, Mother is coming, um, I heard that Mother is coming to Calcutta. What a great message, what a great news. How many people will come and take refuge at her feet and how many people will be freed from all troubles of life. What an absolute enduring capacity. Day and night people are coming and Mother is always ready for serving them all. What a great power. What a grand power for the good of humanity. Here is Holy Mother. And here he said that that mind which we are struggling, the heart and soul, to raise into the chakra, in the throat chakra, Holy Mother is pulling that mind down from that head to this chakra and behaving like an attached person attached with attachment with our world and worldliness as if Radhu, Nis and others and he's trying to try pull the mind down, understand 
the grandness, greatness of that Mahashakti, the great mother. So, this is Swami Turiyananda talking about Holy Mother. So, if we read through the lives of every one of the 16 disciples of Swami Sri Ramakrishna, if we really try to see them and understand through them, everyone has great experience about Holy Mother. The mother they used to think, mother is the mother of the universe, mother of all and her life is an example how to love everyone, see ev- everyone in the same spirit and, and to make the world their own. That is the last message what he has given. Thank you. Integrating the Yogas, 
Brajaprana will be giving the talk on 4th of February. And also on the 2nd February, uh, we, there will be worship of Swami Vivekananda to celebrate the birthday of Swami Vivekananda. So 7 a.m. breakfast offering, 11 a.m. worship, and 12.45 there will be home of fire, followed by Prasad lunch on the 2nd of February, Friday. And 4th of Friday, Sunday, some Prabhrajika Prana will be speaking on the topic integrating the yogas. And other classes are as usual, but this time, this month also, we will have Swami Brahmananda Puja will also come later on. And now we shall close with a chant and then we, uh, we can have back here for some question answer. If we have anything, you can come back here again after the I greet you all and then I will be there available. Om Shri Ramakrishna Maya Jeevita Ishwaritvam Tadbhava Vikrahamai Tadabhinna Shatta Sri Ramakrishna Maya Pavaka Dipti Shakti Matar Viraja Satatang Mamarit Saroji Satchi Sukhanu Vavadayini Bodha Rupi Visheshwari Pranatapalini Siddhidatri Sri Sharadi Bhuvana Mangala Dibba Murti Matar Viraja Satatang Mamarit Saroji Om Shanti 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 O Mother Sarada, you are a living goddess filled with Sri Ramakrishna. You are the realization of his essence. You are none other than he. You are the light and the energy of the Ramakrishna flame. O Mother, dwell forever in the lotus of my heart. You are the enlightenment that brings the joy of existence, consciousness and bliss ruler of the universe, protector of the devotee, you bring the ultimate fulfillment. O Sri Sharada, your divine form sanctifies the earth. O Mother, dwell forever in the lotus of my heart. Om, peace, peace, peace be unto us all. Yeah, when, when are you going to? Two weeks. Two weeks? And where will you go? Um, I'm Set. going to North first, so fly to Delhi and then to... Delhi? Delhi first, then Fort Gaya, and then Varanasi. Varanasi. And then Bengal. That's right. There's a tour group or what? Huh? Tour. Is it a tour group or you have... Yeah, there'll be a, a group up until... I go to Bengal by myself. That's it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tell it to Delhi. Push it, push it for you. Delhi, this is okay. But there is not much space. Ah, so many are going. Many are going yeah, to. Maybe Uh, to go alone is difficult to organize all those. Yeah, so the, the first is a pilgrimage. Pilgrimage. And then when I come, I'll go to Delhi by myself. Baranasi has changed so much, I hear. I, Baranasi has changed. The lanes and things have been all made. So I think today no question. You have any question then we can. So Swamiji, over the years, uh, my understanding of what we mean by mother's will Mm. has really changed. Mm -hmm. And I would like to hear from you uh, how to view this understanding of mother's will. 
all these atrocities what is going on all the fight well war i'm not so much troubled by that at all if everything is the radiance of shakti ultimately um ultimately not relatively but ultimately it's of benefit mm -hmm. and it's teaching us and um if we truly are to see that divine shakti in in all phenomena how can we leave out anything we can't leave out anything mm -hmm. uh, i always repeat swamiji's words in my heart who dares misery love mm -hmm. that's a very courageous mm -hmm. stance mm -hmm. very difficult very challenging mm -hmm. but i can no longer see mother's will as something capricious um sometimes good sometimes bad can't see it that way at all mm -hmm. and so anyway would would love to hear mm -hmm. as we are maturing in our spiritual life a deeper understanding of what mm. we mean by mother's will yeah very difficult to understand mother's will in the war you know send people eh, being tortured killed so much things <coughs> but it is very difficult for us to say what is what but only one thing theoretically we know that it is the absolute truth is brahman and whatever is manifested that is shakti and in every manifestation mother is there but you know the creation goes on with the three gunas the very foundation of our philosophy is that three gunas combination shaktika quality rajas and tamas quality this three qualities permutation and combination is the whole universe there will be tamas darkness will be there there will be love compassion it that is called creation there will be anger there will be frustration there will be brutality at the same time people will cry oh such brutality why oh lord help no sattvika quality rajasika tamasika if, if we accept creation that's a triguna mai in the shakti when you use the word mother divine mother mother is said three guna mai three gunas she is the embodiment of three gunas so anything we look in the whole universe it is made of the three gunas and where is predominance of brightness love compassion shaktika quality dominance of arrogance ego mighty strength that is rajas and tamas is the mean vile and demonic so these qualities are all proportionately more or less so when it so sattvic quality comes in dominance we call a good society loving society a family good family but it's happening everywhere and that is a play and that is the play of the divine mother for her it is a play in the ocean all the waves and ripples and bubbles it is fun for the ocean water one dashing on another another breaking another matters little is the ocean but for us as individual web i am cast that is very difficult to understand why it is me but because we are not looking at the total perspective so we have to that means we have if we as much as we dive deep into our own essential truth we think that is divine play is going on i have nothing to do here only to just to see thy face sami vivekananda said no i don't ask to judge uh, but to see, look at me my face why it is very difficult explanation is very difficult Mm. and we are go beyond satta that's why spirituality is going beyond satta and that's why holy mother as, as sarodananda swami said by whose grace by a glance i i got this blessed opportunity to see 
mother in everywhere. So that power, that is the peaceful state. Mother everywhere playing. One mother is different costume playing. There's a fun. Fight is also good. Love is also good. All are play. As when even when someone goes to enact the drama, in that enactment, everything is play. No one is really hitting anyone. No one is really grabbing someone. No one is loving someone. It's all fun. So that is a state to raise, raise our consciousness from the three guna to the the source, and that is the shakti and shakti man same. Brahman and its power we call, but it is the same reality. And that stage you can reconcile everything. But in our state, we want cause and effect. Why this? Somebody has not done anything in this life. Eh? Suddenly they are bombed, they are killed. Someone has done nothing. They have been removed from their home and they are refugees in another country. Survival more, no? Why, 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 why? Very difficult. But only the explanation, in this way we hear the creation with the made of three gunas, and this will be inherent in anything. You go to the plant. Plant will be some beautiful, fragrant, sweet flower. Eh? Some will be little irritating, you say, poison oak. Eh? You touch it. it so why, why poison oak should be there? No poison oak. No, it should be. There is some uh, so poisonous that you touch and you get immediately some smell is so powerful from some uh, herbal things. One can get totally uh, into unconsciousness. Mm -hmm. So these are the three gunas or interplay of the three gunas. Guna maya, Guna Shraya, what is ah, Guna Maya, ah, Guna Asraya, Guna Maya, Guna Asraya, Narayani, Namastute. Oh Mother, you are Guna Maya, you are made of the three Gunas, and Guna Asraya, you are holding as your foundation of this creation, Guna, on the foundation of Gunas, Guna Asraya. Narayani, oh Mother Narayani, Namastute, we salute. So this is the, uh, when a inner call is here, that this creation, if you accept, you will have to accept the three qualities, and three qualities will exist, that's why it is creation. When three qualities don't do anything, it is called the prolaya. A string, suppose a ball is tied with three strings, and if equal force in equal angle division, the ball will not move anywhere. But you disbalance Sattiko one type, pull little bit, that less, that less, then it will move in this direction little bit. So it is always which direction the society moves, how the society changes into good to bad, bad to worse, eh? is depending on the three gunas interplay. That's why individual become good, society becomes good. Individual becomes sattiko, society becomes sattiko. So when we say mother's will, I can't see um, a being with a self-will. When I think and contemplate mother's will, I just consider um, that ultimate view, that ultimate truth, at the same time existing with this relative experience. It is not who you, it is mother will miss you. you are not there, I am not there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank if you, you say so it is mother's you. will, one word is finishes everything. See, the puppets are dancing. Here the string is being controlled by that. If you say, puppets are nothing, it is the play of the Shakti. Someone is the string adjusting everything and we see the puppet, that they are dancing, they are fighting. So but we are all puppets, I am nothing, I am. That puppet view 
that got me in trouble when I was a younger student because I would think, well, mother's will then is capricious. She's going to pull one this way. And, and I realize that it's my responsibility. Yeah. Not so, anyone else's, res- my, my spiritual life uh, and my life is my responsibility. Achha. So then you are bringing your eye. Uh, then you are bringing your eye and taking the responsibility, I to improve, to become I egoless. Uh, I to zero I. But when I am working, I will have responsibility. Beginning should be that. I know this is good, this is bad. I should have to do this, I cannot do that. Mm. But this stage will continue, continue to understand. I, I see what control we have over our body, over our mind. Forget about outside world. What control we have? What is talking? And next moment is done. So what is the control? What is the control over anything? So we have not. Then we say, doctors, doctors doing their best effort says, sorry, we cannot do anything. So. There we come to conclusion, who is controlling? We put to Divine Mother and this is her will. Her will, this is the will, I, so long my eye is there, this Divine will cannot be understood much. When my eye goes away, you see this all play going on in the ocean. How many waves and ripples are coming, when it will come, when it will stop, is it under your will, my will or anyone? It's having happening. So we say, by cosmic will. And that spirituality is to raise our consciousness into cosmic will. Our will, let it merge into the cosmic will. And their standing says, I am the roaring wave, I am in the sun, I am in the moon, I, I create the world, I destroy the world. When our I merges into the cosmic I, the mother's I, then you can think, you are the power behind everything. But that I is gone that time. This petty I is gone. Main problem is that so long we judge anything, talk anything, we are in the realm of I and within the realm of three gunas. When the I will be purified totally, everything is done. And whole spiritual life is to learn that process of becoming egoless, eyeless. How can one person be there at the same time egoless? Ramakrishna, a person, no ego. He is eating, he is sleeping, but he has no ego. Like the children, how they live. They have their everything. In very, very young, I am talking about, not uh, those who are above one year, two years age. Say, say six years baby, ten years baby. Where is the ego there? They have no ego. And all responsibility is mother then. All play is mother's play. Whether to feed her, whether to dress her, whether to clean her, whether to put her to bed. Every mother. That baby has nothing, no ego. That's why in scripture they say, be like a child, innocent child. Oh, you have something. Give up. <clears throat> yesterday you you were reading, uh, explaining the Gita, the, the Gita yesterday, and uh, uh, Arjuna was uh, a, in the warrior caste, so it seemed like uh, the discussion with Krishna was between just two of the gunas, uh, Sattva and uh, Rajas, hmm. but not Thomas. Thomas? Um, are there more than, are there three or are there more than that many gunas? And uh, I just want... Uh, 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 three, three uh, what? The, the gunas. Three gunas. Three gunas, there is no fourth gunas. There are four? No, no only three. Three, okay. Only three. Okay. Only its permutation combination gives variety. Sometimes we are also possessed by sattika quality. Individual life. Individually, we are sometimes in very spiritual mood, loving mood, caring mood. Uh, for anyone doing anything, suffering, we feel for them. Sometimes we are 
in a rajasa mood, I am I did this, my activity, I, even pride for doing good also. That's also pride. It comes, rajas, ego. Uh, and then tamas comes with uh, all laziness, sloppiness, and uh, just slumber. But we are a mixture of that. Always we are all a mixture of that. And the other, um, I always came in late, but I noticed that you were talking about us as being puppets, but uh, in Indian tradition, there um, there's a propensity for our character, for, for, for us to have a certain character. Isn't that correct? With uh, And at one time it was more easily known we, we would know what our character would be and what what of the four um, manifestation well the four the cast? no well no not the cast the gunas? not the gunas the the, the um, jhana yogi yoga uh, oh, yes. the four yogas no four yoga and, and so I want to know about that and also about um, the, the cast helped us to know or help people in India, I know, uh, to keep in a traditional, to follow a tradition of, of whatever, like the warrior, you you know you're going to be in, you talked about you marry, um, if you're in the caste, it's good to marry somebody that had a cut on their shoulder if they were, <laughs> because they were, they show that they, they were warriors. So my, my question is, what do we have to guide us? And if those are lost to us, or are they? Can you, can you tell me the question? I think the question is about character. Character. How, how do we know what our... Ah, so my character, Swadharma. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. What, is my, what is my character? What should I follow? Mm-hmm. Uh, so we have to follow. You know, everyone has a tendency. Someone may be in a tendency to active, active nature. So they should take this advantage of this nature of action and try to do it unselfish action. And eh? or offering to God as if I have done this work, O oh Lord, for you. They can take. If my tendency is more of prayerful aspect, you can we can develop. But each path can lead us to purify from tamas to rajas to sattva and beyond. A person, if he's done his path of action, so a person is very active person. See for that person to follow the path of activity, just deifying that and putting it at the feet of the Lord. Whatever I did, O oh Lord, I did it for you. So that will improve the qualities of Tam Rajas into Sattva automatically. One is meditating and praying. If really that is his or her own calling, he can do that practice in that way. All the angularities of the mind which pulls them down to tamas or rajas will lift them to sattva and sattva to super sattva, parabhakti, paragyanam. If one is practicing that this world is unreal, real, permanent, impermanent, all this analysis, if that is the tendency of the person, if one does that, follow that, and through that regular thinking, regular thinking, the, all the, the rajas and quality, tamas quality, will all in this thinking process will be cleared up. And it will lead it to sattva, and the truth will reveal. So, what is my dharma? We'll have to decide where my mind bends more, which direction it goes more. In early days, there is, as you said, four systems were there. Brahmin, uh, the warrior group, the Brahmin group, then business class group, and the labor class. This four society was divided in that way. <coughs> and that way, it is proved that if you do your own caste rules, meaning caste rule means the quality, the, the person, not son is son, Brahmin son is not a Brahmin son. But society should judge your Brahminic quality. If you are a person being more 
concentrated in God meditation and prayers, scriptural reading and discourses together, you are doing Brahminic activity. So, if that Brahminic activity in that family what happens? The children are born, they from the childhood even being even uttering the mantras, they start uttering the Vedic mantras because their family mom is doing. You know even today you go to the South India, Southern India and others, the children from their childhood they chant so many beautiful mantras because they are seeing that mom, dad, they are from the, uh, as soon as they get up they start with this mantra chanting. So those things get ingrained into the mind of the child and they become proficient in that particular way of meditation and prayer or social living. A warrior, a warrior's family, they, they have a culture, no? So they learn that how to fight, how to protect, how to protect yourself and all these skills develop spontaneously being in the environment. That's why the caste system was done. But sometimes it, it failed that Brahmin has no Brahminic quality, the son has no quality. Uh, grandson has no quality. He may be a warrior group, but because he is belonging to the Brahmin group, everyone thinks he is a Brahmin. And that created a con plan conflict. Otherwise, the tendency wise, if he is a warrior, if he is a service oriented person, uh, and if he is a business oriented person, so with that, any prof profession can be for our spiritual growth. So, what is our tendency? We will have to judge ourselves, how the, which direction is going. But in the modern time, I will say, we are all. We have our in our Brahminic quality, we have in our Rajasa quality, we have in our Tamasa quality. So, we have all these. So, we can harmoniously use them to go beyond the Gunas. Main purpose is to go to beyond the Gunas. So, by work, by meditation, by prayer, by doing selfless service and analytical way of living the life, understanding, not to get attached to anything, analyze, analyze, analyze. So all the four paths we should follow. So Turiya is beyond the gunas? Yeah, Turiya is beyond ignorance, Turiya is beyond three gunas. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> anything? Anyone have any question? The other thing I learned in my uh, class I took a long time ago in college was the um, the stages of life that are stages of life. The stages of life, and uh, how is that relevant for our spiritual development? Yeah, stages of life is very important because we our whole life is a lesson, no? Uh, first of all, we have to see the world first, what it can give. And we are stood to not hearing someone saying the world is unreal, that does not work for me. So the experience of life is more important. That's why four stages of life, the student life, they're focusing on that study to know, uh, absorb knowledge and things and then entering into the household life, uh, very dedicated life and enjoy the life and also experience the life, what it can give. So full knowledge in one lifetime, you can get the full experience of life. And then afterwards seeing enough, then you find that there is in something higher you can search for and then lead that life of retirement life we call dedicated to higher search, search for higher purpose of life. Eh? But it starts from the very beginning itself and then it grows, matures. What we have read in the student life that comes into the matured life. Oh, I have heard this. Now I see this. So we gain maturity and as we gain maturity, we feel dejected for things which are not that much important. And in, in the retired life, many people have a different view of life. No? When we are young, we had one view of life. When you reach the maturity about 70, 75, no? So after 50 years, no? your view changes, view about life changes. 
and your shift, it, uh, there is, happens a paradigm shift and then more move towards the understanding body, oh body is not so permanent, oh it is so much full of difficult, uh, it is a vehicle, uh, how much we can utilize it and use the body for something higher purpose. So that is why four stages of life is a very standard path to gain the experience and search for the higher. Some may choose in the second stage as monk to path of direct search and not enter into other experience. Some may go into the third stage to that and some may go to the fourth stage. So anyhow to go beyond these experiences and to go to the absolute truth is the goal of life. So four stages are very scientific path to go through experiences and then go beyond. Could you say a few words about forbearance? Forbearance. Forbearance, yeah. In life, we, uh, if we live the life, we have to forbear many things. <laughs> we like or don't like. But we are, if we are spiritual, we can forbear boldly. I know this is the thing, but I bear with it. If I can change, then do. If you cannot change, let it be so. Let it be the will of that lad, let thy will be done. Bring that type of. Forbearance as a Sankaracharya says, that is a very great virtue. It needs character, strength of character. What are the forbearance? Sahanam Sarva Dukhanam. Endure all types of suffering. Physical, mental, emotional, intellectual, any level. Sahan. Yeah, okay, I don't care for it. Okay, it is there. I know it is not true. So I will bear with it. That means. And how will you bear? Not with reaction. Sahanang Sarva Dukhanam. Apratikara Purvakam. I will not resist that. Much strength is necessary. I can give a blow, but I will not give the blow. I am holding myself. Sahanang, Sarva Dukkhanang, all types of Dukkha or suffering, to endure all types of Dukkha, suffering. Sahanang, Sarva Dukkhanang, Apratikara Purvakam, without any protest. I could have given a blow, I could have given a good lesson, but no, it is my character, I am gaining restraint on myself. It is a character building process. Uh, it is not for the weak people. We weak people cannot forbear. So they are under helpless guise under the circumstances. But spiritually powerful people can endure. Holy Mother can endure. Root did the life of Holy Mother. All the incidents you will find how much endure one can endure. No complaint. Ramakrishna passed away. Ramakrishna said, Don't put your hand like this to anybody. Mother keep that dignity and went back to join Kamar Pukur, ancestral home of Ramakrishna. So mother went to that home and all the earnings which was settled by Ramakrishna to give some pension for Ramakrishna that was stopped. As a result she has nothing to eat. Nothing to dress, nothing to wear. One cloth, day and night, it is getting torn. She is putting a thread, knot here and there and there. And it's going on, no one knows that mother is in such suffering. She can get lunch, may not get any supper. She can get simple rice, could not purchase some salt even. Such poverty, utter poverty. But never put her hand this way. When Swami Vivekananda Noren in Calcutta came to know because someone went to visit Kamar Pukur and reported that the mother is in this condition, then he called a meeting of the devotees and then raised some fund and sent it to mother for her maintenance. But mother never asked this and never complained to anyone that oh, I am tortured, I am, uh, my money is stopped, my pension is stopped. 
never complain to anyone. No one knows that. That is the only great spiritual power can do that. We must have to, normally we see we complain. This is not right. This is not fair. Yes, from our standpoint we should do that. But spiritual person can endure so much that they are not chinta, they will not come into their thought that someone is doing harm to me. And it's a very lofty state. But we have to struggle that. That is a power. And that's a wonderful sign of your spiritual growth. But if we are not fit for that, then we should complain. No, it is not true. We will have to say, hey, you are, you are misunderstanding me. That is not the fact. Huh? We will have to express ourselves because we are not in that level. But with humility, with, with, with softness to make it understandable. So this is the point that it is good to have some uh, capacity to endure in life. No, Otherwise, uh, life cannot go on. Someone will have to endure. So many things we endure. Endure with frustration, endure with anger, or endure with nothing, no grass in mind. That is the point. That should be the goal. Okay. And then there's this story of sometimes the, the snake has to hiss. Huh. Sometimes you have to hiss. That, then, that you should do, but hiss, yeah. but no, uh, no anger inside. No, we should have to do. No, we should have to do. For survival, we need to do. But internally, there will be no reaction. I know it is I find my protection I am doing it, but I have no anger inside. I have no grudge inside. And that will transcend in such a way, you will not a state will come that, that protection is also not needed. I am protected. Anyhow, this is the higher, higher, higher level of understanding. Thank you all. Jai Maa.